one. Kat Holmes, welcome to the Data Strategy Show, 66 questions, data leaders unplugged. And you're the data leader today who's going to be unplugged. How do you feel? How are you? I feel like I'm going to have to be vulnerable like I've never oh. been before. And that's a big <laughs> thing for me because I'm pretty transparent normally too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. I'll be easy on you. So you know it's a format of 66 questions and rapid fire. So let's just go straight into it. So Kat, how do you start your day? Slowly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I turn on my medical lights, which gives me a whole bunch of vitamin D to stimulate okay. me. Okay. And I get acquainted with the world via my phone. And then I get up and mm -hmm. I'm ready to tackle the day. Nice. And do you have a ritual after that? Do you, do you sort of, you know, have first cup of tea or do you, do, do you start to, to wind yourself up with something like coffee? Yeah, I don't take a lot of caffeine, um, mm -hmm. but I do a yoga, a short yoga session. Oh, nice. To unkink all the, all the knots in this middle-aged body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yes, I try and do that in the afternoons. That's smart. And yeah, I have a few lotions and potions. Which oh, help very good. Which start me. Very mm. good. So tell me, what's your biggest strength? I think my people skills, my mm -hmm. ability to put myself in the other person's shoes. Empathy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we talk about being able to deliver value from data strategy and align those to, uh, to business strategy, which is what everyone says uh, is the key and they're, and they're right. My ability then to understand the business drivers, to understand individual mm -hmm. team needs. Yep. That um, to yeah, the operations of a business. Good, good. Ooh. I like that. What's the what's the biggest learning experience you've had to date? That's a big I question. Don't know. Yes, it is. It is. Um, I've always been supremely optimistic and curious. That's a, my core character. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes I think I can do something when I'm not ready. Right. So, so for example, uh, I decided that I wanted to produce feature films. Yes. Uh, and I did make a, a pretty good feature film, but I wasn't ready to start uh -huh. making it. I uh -huh. needed to put in place a bunch of, of things beforehand so that it wasn't quite a difficult experience. It didn't need to have been that hard. Mm -hmm. So getting the foundations ready and knowing how to do certain things. Yes. I've always been one to jump in at the deep end. So you're like me. Uh, I yeah. do the same. My wife keeps telling me it's not a good trait, but you know, that's just how I am. I guess you I mean it sorry. No, as you say, I guess you either sink or swim, right? Right, exactly. And, and I think both of us have had some wonderful life experiences and, and done some amazing things, but it can be scary. At yes, times. it can be. So what's your favorite time of the day? Oh, probably around 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm at my best. I tend to work um, 12 to 8 is my ideal. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, that's what I work. I'm, I'm in the zone. I've done stuff. It's been interesting and useful. And I'm like, right, let's crack on and really nail the day now. Yeah. In fact, um, you're the first person who said at around about six o'clock is when you're, you know, ready to get going and, uh, you know, you're most inspired. So that's really interesting in terms of the, your favorite I, time. Mm. I think it is. There's been this dogma for decades about mm. the early bird catching the worm. And that, yeah. I think that is actually, that's not an inclusive idea because we all have different circadian rhythms. Absolutely. And workplace, yeah, workplace flexibility needs to account for yes. getting the most out of our staff when yeah. they're on fire. Yeah. Mm. And now that we've got this sort of hybrid or, you know, potentially hybrid working, I think that's, that actually helps, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. So tell me, what's one vice you wish you could give up? 
Um, <laughs> it's a good one. I don't have the usual vices. Uh-huh. Uh, I can binge watch TV. Ah, it's probably, okay. Uh, you know. So sometimes I'm like just one more episode when I need yes. to be in bed. Yes, so you can get stuck into it and just captivated by it. We're going to come to yeah. a, a question about that later. But yeah. what, what makes you angry? Injustice. Injustice. Selfishness. Yeah, yeah. Yep. People yep. looking out for themselves at the expense mm -hmm. of the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your best trait? I care about people in the community. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So the decisions I often make, both in my personal and professional life, are about what's best mm -hmm. for, for the whole. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is wonderful. What are you most excited about these days? Oh, I, I want to be really corny and say the power of data to transform the world. Uh-huh. And I think that well, you just said it. be my answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think data can have a really key role to play in saving the human race from extinction with the with the climate emergency. I think mm -hmm. I'm most excited about that. Wow, that that's a pretty big, big statement for data right there. <laughs> what what's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh boy. <laughs> um. I actually received a fantastic one recently. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's impossible to say best. Okay. Um, but, she, but she said, don't underestimate your ability and, and what sets you apart as a data leader, your abilities to, uh, to understand the business. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a compliment to me because I know I have it, but you don't know that others can see it. Sure, you know? sure. So, I think that it's was a, an amazing compliment. Mm, and I think it's a really good trait to have, to be fair. I think it's one of those things which many people overlook um, and mm. go more for the, the sort of technically mm. focused roles. So tell me, what makes you smile the most? I'm going to give you a second answer to the first one, a silly one. Okay. So one of the greatest compliments anyone can ever give me is to compliment my language ability. So I speak five languages. Wow. And whenever anyone says, wow, gee, your French is good, or wow, your Japanese sounds amazing. I'm like, yeah, that's the best compliment of that. <laughs> so you're a linguist. I didn't realise that's something interesting yeah. about you. Oh, mm. I had no clue. So which language is obviously English, French, Japanese? What are the other two? Yes, um, German and Mandarin. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's... So you, you've, you've more or less covered the world apart from Spanish. When is that one going to, you know? <laughs> Spanish, but yeah. I know. I was meant to do Spanish instead of German, but the heart goes where the heart goes. Oh, I see. Okay. So back to the question. What makes you, is that what makes you smile the most when someone tells you that? Or was that the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, that's, I mean, potentially. Yeah. I think the thing that makes me smile is when humans look out for each other. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A small example. Uh, my housemate's dog got out onto the street um, earlier in the week and she never does that. And, this, you know, and I was freaking out. And then uh, just a complete stranger at the other end of the street stopped and made sure that the puppy couldn't, you know, go any oh, further. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that made my heart sing. Yeah, and that's community spirit, which is severely lacking in a number of uh, areas that I've definitely noticed. Yeah, yeah. What's I, I know that now we know that you're a linguist, but are there any are there any other things that people don't know about you? I'm sure there are plenty. Oh gosh. Well, I was nearly a professional cricket player. No way. Yeah. <laughs> and mm. and this would have been back in Australia or is Yes, 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 a long time ago. Oh, in the wow. Early 90s, uh, wow. I had a choice. Mm. I had a choice but... to keep going on um, whether or not I, I, I followed that path or whether I followed a more, you know, you finish the university, get mm -hmm. into, out into the corporate world. Yeah. Yeah. I chose, I chose the latter. So, mm -hmm. so my question is batsman or bowler, batswoman or bowler? 
bats person. I don't know how to say it anymore. <laughs> batter. We just say batter. Batter. Okay. Uh, I was in opening batter. Oh. Yes. Um, and a second string keeper. Wow. So high score. Oh, no, I don't know that I should tell you that. Why not? Because <laughs> it's not high enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I would still remember, though. Yeah. 30 years later, it was 53. Wow, that's <laughs> good. That's better than I've ever got. I mean, I'm not a cricketer, but wow, that's amazing. 53. Well, I take my hat off to you for sure. But being a cricketer, I, and I think that's amazing because my my daughter is is in the cricket team as well. So I, yeah. you know, I was, I was teaching her to bowl the other day. Um, so it's, it's actually really cool to do that. I just loved it. What makes you feel most like yourself? When when I feel safe being my authentic self in a professional environment, mm -hmm. we spend most of our week in professional environments yeah and i'm pretty i'm not a typical corporate type you know i'm really heart centric and uh you know social justice is a key part of what i bring to the workplace mm -hmm. and uh i'm super dynamic and passionate and you know being given the space to do that um that that is just be my my true authentic yeah. self yeah yeah i love and, that and not to be seen as a threat to anyone, but mm -hmm. just um, I'm most of myself when I think that people are not going to judge me harshly. Right. What I say. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes for mostly everybody, doesn't it? Yes, it totally we have, does. We have, well, I mean, we have this facade when we're at work, don't we? You know, we have to behave like somebody else or, you know, and I just don't get that. I, I, I sometimes no. feel it's strange. When some people are really good at that, that's their default mode. They're quite mm. reserved and they, mm. they choose very carefully when to show their part. I'm just not that. I'm hard on sleeve. What you see is what you get. And, Wonderful. Um, I like that. Yeah. And why not? What are the three things that you can't live without? Um, film and TV. Okay. Being a filmmaker. Yes. Um, uh, and perhaps a left field dancer is I have a ton of medicine that I take to keep me healthy because mm -hmm. of my various, um, you know, my health profile sure. live without those. Yep. And I always yep. think if the apocalypse happened, what would, what would happen if I couldn't suddenly post apocalyptic, <laughs> how long would I survive? Um, and, uh, community people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the back to the whole TV binge watching. And so tell me, what's your current TV character obsession? Two, uh, I mean, just one is impossible for a filmmaker, uh -huh. um, but uh, Obi-Wan. Oh, I love that. I love it. Yeah. So um, maybe the young Leia, I thought she was incredible. She that. was. Yeah. 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 She was very good. Yeah. It's, um, it, I, I do like those. Um, uh, the origin stories or the or the character building that they've got in there. And I'm I, I, I thought just some of the characters that you never really get into and suddenly, you know, like the Mandalorian or Boba Fett and you, you sort of, you know, start to, to see them as human. So I, I, I thought they're really good at bringing that out. You know. Yes, and I think for those of us that were raised mm. on the canon, Star Wars is, you know, the seminal work of, of those of us of a certain age. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to get those backstories is an absolute yeah. gift. Yeah. yeah. So cool. was were those the, the, the last shows that you binge watched or are there others? The other one I'm watching completely um, left field. My girlfriend got me into it recently mm -hmm. on the very late starter is Great British Bake Off and, oh. and Sue and Mel. <laughs> So, uh, so these are the old seasons. So what yes. Sue and Mel have bring again, the heart, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's quite a kind reality show mm -hmm. and I don't watch reality shows for that reason. I find them mean, mm -hmm. nasty. Mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. They bring out the worst in humans, yes. but, but there's, 
so lovely and that's a, a great role model to have i think fantastic yeah. fantastic tell me what's the most adventurous thing you've done in your life oh boy <laughs> there's no way I, there's, a, there's a couple i can't tell you really. well no i mean um, keep it clean okay keep it clean <laughs> um probably walking i was in um, northern japan in hokkaido mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a day hike across a very tall mountain mm -hmm. um, with all my bags. And at one point, I thought I was going to fall off the mountain and die. Oh, so my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. So how would you define yourself in three words? Oh, that's easy because I've done this work with a therapist. <laughs> I am. Okay. Um, Relentlessly curious, highly optimistic, and just a little bit reckless. Wonderful. I like that. Yeah. So, what's your most overused phrase? If you have one. You got this. You got this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Pick your battles. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Sage advice, sage advice. What's your pet peeve? Lack of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the moment that your career completely changed? Yes. Do you want me to tell you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's two, actually. The first was when I moved here. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a general complete change. Yep. So it opened up um, the wonderful worlds of uh, the UK and London in particular, which mm -hmm. is such a much bigger market than Australia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. much more opportunity. Mm -hmm. The second was when uh, the COO of TravelX sat me down and offered me the role of, of heading up a data transformation program. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. And you still vividly remember that, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I got... I've got ones in my personal life when I was mm -hmm. standing on a hill in Mongolia, mm -hmm. but that's a long story. And I'm not sure we have time. Well, I think that. I'm, you know, I think we'll have, have to have a little bit of time for that. Standing on a hill in Mongolia. Now you can't let people down and not tell us what that was. All right. So I had taken a year off. I was meant to be an academic and I'd taken a year off before I went down that path, finished mm -hmm. off. Um, and uh, I was traveling from, because I've been living in Japan, I was traveling through China, through mm -hmm. to Europe and Africa and back home. And I was going to mm -hmm. write a book about my experiences. And I landed in mainland China and it completely blew me away, but I already right. had my ticket through to Moscow. So mm -hmm. I went to Mongolia, couldn't stop thinking about China. So I was on this tour, you know, standing next to the, on top of the hill next to the yurt. And I'm like, that way is Russia, or is it still? I think it's still the USSR. Then. That way is China. Okay. Which way do I yep. go? Wow. And one decision radically changed the course of my life. And 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 you didn't do what I've done previously, flip a coin. I was a Christian still at the time. I asked God. Okay. Okay. Uh, of course, of course, no answer was forthcoming. But, yes. Uh, but yes. Yes. That. Was, I made a decision. Good for you. I chose one has China, to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, tell me, what makes you feel accomplished? Um, seeing positive change mm -hmm. that I've helped mm -hmm. affect or that I have mm -hmm. led. Yes. Yeah. And do you have any regrets? I used to have a ton. Yeah. But now I feel that everything happens for me, not to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what makes you happy? Um, at the moment, doing DIY in my back garden. I'm busy um, rendering. What are you wall. building? I'm. Oh, yeah, I'm just redoing 
uh, my kind of my the, the entrance to my backyard. Oh, fantastic! Um, there's cementing and sanding. And oh, wow! Here. That's a big job. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, what's heavily played on your music list? Interesting. So I'm a massive reader and mm -hmm. a massive TV and film watcher. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to a lot of music. Okay. But I do have a playlist um, based around Ludovico Einaudi. Yeah. Um, and that just helps me focus mm -hmm. when I, I've got scatterbrain. Yep. But if I really just want to go to my tried and true, it's the, it's the usual um, pink and you know, sort of 20 years ago stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. What are, th what are the three things at the top of your bucket list? One I can't tell you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then don't. <laughs> tell me the other probably three. To, <laughs> probably to visit uh, every country um, in Europe mm -hmm. before I leave the UK, which mm -hmm. is maybe in 30 years. But yeah. Um, uh, the second is, gosh, I've, I've done so many things on my bucket list. You have. I've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of just really happy being me and, um, I haven't got three. Okay. All right. That's the one then. Going to see all the oh, countries. See in the Northern Lights. Uh -huh. See the Northern there we Lights. Go. There we go. That's number two. Perfect. You don't have to have three if you don't. That's fine. Do you, do you have a guilty pleasure? Yes. Um, pancakes with bacon and maple syrup. Oh, breakfast. my goodness. That, those are so good. And I like them with blueberries on top as well. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, just the healthy version. And then <laughs> yeah. been watching TV. Is a good right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what book did you most recently finish, seeing as you're an avid book reader? Oh, I am an avid reader. Last night I finished um, Richard Osman's follow up for the first oh, time. Oh, yes. Club. Yeah, yeah. Was it good? That's oh, fun. It's just lovely. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Very light. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could go back in time, what would you tell your 16 year old self? You will figure it out one day. Hang in there. That's cool. If you could switch lives with one person for a day, who would it be? Oh, boy. Brene Brown. Oh, very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's one thing you've always wanted to try, but you've been too scared to do so? I've tried most things like skydiving I've done, rappelling. Um, here's a left field one. Go for it. Holding people accountable, holding people accountable publicly. Oh, wow. Ah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. And yeah, it can be, that can be quite scary at times, can't it? Because you don't know what the, uh, the reaction is yes. going to be. I think it's called a career limiting move. Yes. <laughs> What's the most ridiculous fact that you know? Oh, gosh. Ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you know, useless fact, maybe. I know, I know lots of random facts because I love facts. I'm great at trivia. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I know the populations of a lot of countries. Do you? Okay, tell me one. Uh, no, I'll ask okay. you one. Hold on. Hold on, Mongolia. Yeah. I said a lot, not all of them. <laughs> all right. France, um, France and Germany have roughly the same populations, 80 which, million. Which is? Uh, uh, 80 million. Oh, 80 million. Okay. UK mm -hmm. is 68. Yep. US, US? 360. Mm -hmm. 360. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Australia, 25. New Zealand, 10. Japan, 125, something like that. Mm -hmm. Indonesia is one. No, I forgot Indonesia. China, Don't worry. India. Yeah, as to how these countries play out and so on. I think that's my, 
I studied politics. In, I said, uh -huh. actually, I studied international relations at university. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. yeah. so you, yeah, good. If you could resurrect one person from history and put them in the world today, who would it be? That's such a hard question. You don't um, have to answer it. If you, I mean, if you're stumped, I was, use a batting my term. My initial thought was Nelson Mandela. Uh-huh. My, my initial thought was Nelson Mandela. Yep. Okay. We need to find leaders, um, tenacious leaders. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Passionate leaders. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And what's the one thing you wish you knew at age 19? Um, I think all of us wished we'd had a crystal ball about <laughs> what we're going to be the hot professions. Oh, yeah. Coming yeah. around the corner. Uh huh. You picked the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I was always encouraged to follow my passions for study, mm -hmm. um, but I probably wish that I had just gotten a basic foundation, like I'd done an IT degree or a commerce degree or mm -hmm. finance, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because or law. Yeah, you know, yeah. because you can you can do whatever you want. True. You know, after True. you study. But, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you weren't living in the UK, where would you be living? LA. Yeah, I had actually oh. had a choice between London and LA. Um, yeah. Very close call that I chose London. Mm. Wow. I would have chosen LA, I think. Yes. I mean, weather wise, but yes. given, given the challenges in the US, um, yep. I think yep. I made True. the right call. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> if you could offer one piece of advice to upcoming data leaders, what would it be? Uh, to build your soft skills and your leadership skills. Your technical skills have a critical role to play, mm -hmm. but a more, um, the difference between success and failure is your leadership skills. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good points, good points. Where was the best vacation you've ever taken? I've had some wonderful vacations. I bet you have. <laughs> Should have prepped this because my mind is just racing through the millions just um, the first thing that lot. comes up in your mind come on um okay uh severe yeah oh that that yeah. that is a beautiful place yeah. yeah yeah that is that is quite extraordinary actually mm. yeah. very warm as well yes menorca was a mm. great one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where what's one city you've always dreamed of traveling to Um, Anchor Watt or Anchor Watt, I should uh -huh. say. Uh -huh. It's the German version. Yes. Um, it's not exactly a city, but it, it is. It's a and place. There's a, pla there's a place in Bulgaria called Plovdiv, which is the oldest continuously inhabited village in Europe. Oh, wow. Mm. Plovdiv. Mm, interesting. Plovdiv. Coast. Never heard of it. Ah. What was the best lesson your parents ever taught you? Um, I use this in job interviews, actually. Yeah. People um, meet people where they're at, not where you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. What's your favorite food? Ooh. Japanese, um, proper Japanese. Not sushi. Fine in this country. Um, and Mexican. Oh. Well, sushi. Yeah, but yeah. it has to be from a... Um, oh, a sushi master. A right. Sushi okay. Master. Okay. Okay. Which is very. I mean, when you've lived, in, it is when you've lived in Japan. It's a bit yeah. hard to accept. Yeah. So, um, Japanese and um, and Mexican mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. equal. Very difficult to find here as well. Good Mexican. Have you found a place yet? Yes. I have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah. So Tell London. Me. London has really come of age. Um, I'll tell you offline. It's okay. in King's Cross called okay. Pasa Pastor yeah, yeah. and another one. I can, and I can point you to some great Japanese places. In the Somebody world. told me about the Mexican place you just mentioned. 
as their favorite as well. So I'm glad somebody else has given that recommendation. So uh, you listen to a, a, a lot of uh, podcasts, I'm assuming. What's, what's your favorite podcast at the moment? Besides yours? <laughs> no, don't, don't talk about mine. <laughs> Um, I listen, so I mostly do podcasts when I'm working outside on my, mm -hmm. you know, doing my DIY and yeah. I flip between, um, uh, Brene Brown has two podcasts, mm -hmm. Dare to Lead and Unlocking Us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also listen to Kyle Winterbottom's Driven yep. by Data. Yep. Yep. And how do you relax? I, um, do yoga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. And um, I watch I watch film and TV. Mm -hmm. I find that one of my key relaxations to just get out of the world I'm in and be transported to different worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it's find it stimulates my creativity. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What's a movie that made you cry? Oh, most many movies make me cry. <laughs> um, but probably one that, you know, endures from the level of sobbing mm -hmm. was Saving Private Ryan. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll have to watch that again. It's been a while since I've watched that. Would you say, and, and do you have a favorite movie ever? Mm, no. no? I, as a filmmaker, it's impossible. It's impossible. But I, yeah. when I'm asked, I will, I will say that one because it, it really shifted movies that shift the dial mm -hmm. um, that shift the dial of the conversation. Saving Private Ryan was one of them. It was the first time we got a true realistic picture of the horrors of yeah. war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. True. Um, not a sanitized picture. Yeah. Uh, the major, um, my seminal filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And it, who, who would you say is your biggest inspiration? I am inspired by lots of people in different ways mm -hmm. um, constantly and I think right now one of my biggest inspirations is Roisin McCarthy mm -hmm. she's the head of women in data yes yes um, and she inspires me daily by what she does for the UK data community mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And how much she does, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she's a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T tough to be like that, but very, very good talent mm -hmm. to have. Talking about that, what's the one talent you wish you had? To be able to survive on four hours sleep a night. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. What's the one data trend that you dislike? Ooh. bandwagoning bandwagoning ah jumping on the bandwagon mm. it's no, i've never heard it said like that but that's a good term to use what's a superpower you wish you had um i wish i was a duck a duck yeah um, I mean, not an actual duck. Sorry, yeah. just to be clear. Um, <laughs> but, um, water off a duck's back. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's also a, a good, good uh, answer. What's something you won't be doing or you don't want to be doing in 10 years time? Um, having to mold who I am in order to fit in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And looking back on your life, is there anything you would have done differently? Yes. This is quite a vulnerable answer. But okay. Who I, am. Yep. I would have dealt with my trauma a lot earlier. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the best thing that happened this year? Mm. I should say meeting you, and that has been a highlight. <laughs> been a Don't flatter me. Don't flatter me. Something else. <laughs> um, probably menopause X. 
Oh yes, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's been pretty pretty cool, isn't it for you? Yes, and yeah. uh, and meeting meeting my girlfriend, my partner. Oh, lovely! That's wonderful. That's nice. So, back to movies a little bit. Which yes. movie makes you laugh the hardest? One that did make me laugh hard for a long time was Team America. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, I remember I think- that. I think it served a really important function, but mm-hmm. um, it's now it's now dated. Yes. Um, so something that I actually haven't laughed really hard in a movie for a while. For a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll have to find that movie then. I know. You yeah. can put it as a PS to this. Okay. Podcast. I'll do that. <laughs> do you believe in second chances? Absolutely. And third. And fourth. And fourth. What's, what's your greatest talent? Being able to read people. Mm -hmm. And what three words best describe your leadership style? Authentic. uh, And Mm -hmm. heart-centred. Accountable. Yep, that's three. And and flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay. The heart-centred was related to the authentic. Oh, to the authentic, yeah, yeah. So what would you say are the current top data challenges that companies are dealing with that that you would love to try and overcome for them? I think the biggest challenge data leaders are dealing with in companies uh, Mm -hmm. or consultancies into companies is getting the C-suite to understand that data is data is almost like a canary in the cold mine the coal mm-hmm. mine mm-hmm. so to exploit your data actually involves you taking a long hard look at your entire company structure yep is it set up for success yep your long-term data successes will be based on your ability to restructure how you do your business mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so that is a really big challenge yeah companies really are still in the space of let's throw some money at it get some outputs and it's radically going to improve our bottom line yeah yeah and so there will be some success there but not so to mm-hmm. me that's one and two it is so big that it it is it's one massive yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and i think the third challenge is um around the it mm-hmm. um and how companies, the biggest barrier to them is that, that they're leading with tech. Mm-hmm. The tech is absolutely critical to success. You should, not, should never be um, choosing your technology before you put your data leadership in place, yeah. for example. Yeah, I've seen true. companies do that. I've seen yeah. CIOs and CTOs and, uh, and enterprise architects leading the conversation. Again, a key places at the table, mm-hmm. but um, your entire inter- the success of your data strategy largely is dependent on this on your enterprise architecture as a whole. So, so yeah, to me that's number three. Yeah, perfect. I love those. I love those. What are the three words that you would use to describe living in the UK? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I say more London because I think London's a country in itself. In itself, yeah. Like separate yep. to the UK. Yeah. And I know, and I want to know so many of my people in, in, in England and Scotland are going to be like, oh, I'm not a bloody Londoner. But, <laughs> um, but um, London is wonderful. It's diverse. Yeah. Um, and it's dynamic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Perfect. Perfectly said. Uh, mm. What's the one thing you had to learn the hard way? Um, but coming back to pick your battles as advice, just you can't, you can't make, you can't bend everything to your will. You've got no, to you let can't. go. Yep. Yeah, very, very good advice. Learning to let go is is something that 
yeah, it's very difficult for people, but um, it, it mm. truly helps. How do you handle pressure in your career? I let it build up until I explode over everybody. Oh, That's God. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. Um, I, do have, I do have a tendency to, um, to not let it out bit by bit. Okay. I've dealt with. So that was... Uh, a joke that was based in, in prior. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I make sure that pressure and like the work is not the only thing I have in my life. Yeah. So I balance yeah. my life out with exercise and friends and mm -hmm. travel. And yeah. Yeah. Things, just everything. Keep your sanity. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What did you want to do with your life at the age of 12? Be the first prime minister, female prime minister of Australia. Wow, that was a very, very quick answer. So you could still be that, right? Nah, Julia <laughs> Gillard stole that one. What's something you still like to learn? Oh, I like to learn every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I think I think one of the things I want to learn next um, is. Data, the trends in data science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, for example, um, sorry, I'm having a mental blank. GPT four, I think it's called. Oh yes. No, yeah. Yeah, GPT. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. number four, and it's mm -hmm. going to be a game changer. And I mm -hmm. wish I had time to just delve in more to some of the uh, the technology. What are this? Is, I suppose it's technology, it's a technical development. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, my final question. You get stuck on a deserted island. What's the one thing that you would take with you? Um, a smartphone with a battery that never dies, that has connection. <laughs> I'm, That's... I am not a... No. I'm not a deserted island kind of person. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a, a connected person. Yeah, yeah, a connected I, person. Um, it would be my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for giving us a, a window into you, your leadership, and just what makes you tick, Kat Holmes. It was really cool to speak to you today. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure, Samir. Thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you.